Welcome on into the White Willie Podcast Show. I'm Willie Cologne, and he is... JJ, baby, what's going on with your big Willie? It's good to see you, man. Oh, man, JJ, it is always a pleasure to see you as well. A lot to talk about, a lot to dive into. I had a busy weekend. I know you had a busy weekend. I always love to start off with you. So how was your weekend, JJ? Big Willie, I'm just going to be honest with you. You got to be goddamn feeling mighty great that you're sitting at the house all alone because for Uh-oh. some damn reason, I had a honey do list this goddamn weekend. I had to clean up so Gucci had a darn list goddamn that seemed like here to goddamn Tokyo, Big Willie. And uh-huh. every time you look up, I'm thinking I'm going to relax. I don't have a long week of working. This is my time to come down, come home. Settle down, got done it, relax, look at got done it, some TV, movies, whatever I feel like I want to do, because now I can wind and dine and relax myself. And all of a sudden, that wasn't the same plan so Gucci had, and got yeah. done it, I had this honey-do list, got done it. All I can think about while I'm working, damn near seen like from sun up to sundown, what the hell Willie doing? What Big Willie got done doing right about now? Because got, got done it, I work, and I know you just had a ball, no kids, no Akeisha got done just Willie, Big Willie in his big house got done it, enjoying whatever the hell he want to got done do. If he want to eat a thousand egg rolls and hot wings got done and hamburgers, he can do that. And ain't nobody got to tell you what to do. That wasn't my situation, Big Willie. JJ, I don't, listen, I don't know what to tell you. Listen, so for everybody out there, my wife and the children are currently in Mississippi. My wife is shooting, getting ready for the another, uh, another season of Bell Collective. I am right now in New Jersey. Um, I have to work. I have to work. I got to keep the lights and the water running here. So I have to work. I'm, once again, you can catch me on the Craig Carton Show uh, Monday through Friday, 7 to 9.30 uh, a.m. And so I got to work. And so you're right, JJ. Once I dropped the family off and I took off back up top, I stretch it out around this place. Thank you, love you, baby. It feels good. Come on. Long day's work. I go get a workout in, and I'm just like, have a good, nice lunch. It is quiet. There's no <laughs> Willie, Willie, Daddy, Daddy, Willie, Daddy, Willie, 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 Daddy, Daddy, Daddy. Daddy. I got none of that. And for you know, when you when you have children. That are the of the toddler uh, stage, like my kids are. Um, my day is packed. Like there's no, there's really no. My day really doesn't shut off until after bedtime. You know, so like I, I, I work. I, I'm up at four in the morning. I go to work. I'm out of the studio by ten. By ten, I'm heading to the gym. I'm in the gym by eleven. From eleven like to twelve thirty, I'm getting my sweat on and workout on. Then I get back home, and that's when my daily honeydew list. And that's just catching up with the Keisha, catching up with the foundation. <laughs> Catching up with the kids, and that's like in a three-hour period. So they get off of school at four, and when four hits, it daddy's daddy's got to go. Daddy's got to take care of swimming. They 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 got uh, you know they go to class to, for, for some other stuff, and outside of that, I got to come home, feed them, wash them. After wash them, bedtime stories, and then I don't really get down from my whole everything I've done throughout the day until like nine nine thirty, and so to come home, JJ. And feel like, yeah. <laughs> I, 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 took, I I gotta be honest. My nap game this week was impeccable. I had some high quality naps that I, I just they just recharged my spirit. So <laughs> for every parent or a dad out there who's ever had a little moment or a week to themselves, um, you know exactly what I'm talking about. I so. should have flew out there with you, Big Willie. I, I should have came out there your wake up. This is what I'm doing. It just ain't working. Oh, Big Willie, I ain't going to lie. I was kind of jealous. I was kind of mad. So that damn Big Willie sitting at the damn house doing what the hell he wanted to get done and do. I was taking my damn time. And my wife, of course, this is what this is what women do. This yeah. is the thing they do. They're just like, oh, so you don't miss me? You're you so right. You don't miss your kids? I'm like, no. Of course I miss you. Of course I miss the kids, my little babies. Yeah. But daddy needed some me time. Exactly. Me time. Yes. So I do not feel guilty at all uh, for having this beautiful week to stretch out in my own bed without Woo. having a in my neck, without one crying about something else, without my wife nagging me about something <laughs> to like turn that all the way the fuck off. Felt amazing. Hold up, Big Willie. You didn't have to stop by the store or the restaurant or nothing to pick up nothing or to grab something before you make it to the house or uh, go by to his house and grab the, none of that? 
Listen, I am very grateful. Thank you, Lord, for my beautiful family and my awesome wife and, my, and everybody and all the miracles you bestowed upon me. And I, and I carry on with high regard. Uh, but just to kind of push back and say, hey, this is winter time. <laughs> winter so time. Good. Ain't that? <laughs> uh, so really good. And so just to kind of tell you about my weekend, because I know we got to push along. Yeah. Drake Little Wayne uh, was performing at the Prudential Center. What? Big Willie, you should have had me come up there, Big Willie. I got a call last minute say, hey, big fella, I got a suite. One of my friends who's a part of my uh, the, the, the Lupus Foundation that I'm currently uh, on, uh, my good friend Ted uh, Karras, uh, he was like, hey, man, you know, him and his son invited me. Uh, they had a suite. It was like Drake's performing. Uh, it was great. It was awesome. I also had Lil Wayne on my morning show that like, that Friday. Mm. So I had Lil Wayne on in the show. Got to meet Lil Wayne. He was awesome. Good brother. Got a lot of respect for him. Obviously, I love his music. As, as I get into the building and work my way up to the suite, and I'm kind of, you know, taking it all in, um, I don't know anybody. I don't know any of the new artists. I don't know some of these current artists. I know the names. <laughs> I've heard of them. Um, and Drake, so let me put this. I want to say it without sounding like a hater. Do I know Drake's music? Yes. Do I do I appreciate Drake's music? Sure. Is Drake's live music or his performance necessarily for me? No, it's for the women. Like he harmonized for like 20 minutes just doing <laughs> riffs and singing and singing and riffs and girls were going bonkers. It, it it's for the teenagers. It's for the young women. It's not for a 40-year-old man. Well, uh, big big like, Willie, I'm with you on that. I'm going to be me and you feel the same way when it comes to that. I try to sometime adjust and say, all right, let me just let me just step in and see what the kids are going crazy about. He was he had an okay stage, he had a lot of energy, right? Uh okay stage presence. Uh he was he's very engaged with the crowd. Everybody was singing the song, he was singing it back to them. And it was it was okay. I didn't stay the whole show. I did I actually left early. It was okay. So Drake's concert was fine. Okay. It was fine. It was And good. then you got a chance to just get out. Spread your wings a little bit, God damn it, and that didn't have to worry about coming home and picking up stuff and just enjoying Big Willie. It's just, there was just no checking in. It's exactly. Just like, no, like, hey, babe, I'll, I'll, be, I'll be home in 20 minutes. Do you need me to pick anything up? No, it was none of that. Well, but was, Big Willie, you're getting what? a little too comfortable. I'm going to have to hurry up and get a teacher back up there. No, you don't. <laughs> you need to do it, Mike. This. JJ, we got. I got to read you some comments, man. Man, what these comments talking about? What the people got on their mind? So I want to say thank you to everybody that's, that continues to support me and JJ's podcast. Um, we're doing this uh, a lot, and I got to send a special thank you to our awesome, amazing uh, producer extraordinaire, uh, Brittany Smith, who is literally yes. the backbone of this whole operation. Yes, I, I mean, I, yes. Britt actually has another job. Uh, which well, she's absolutely fantastic on. And she spends her time, me and her, kind of just turning into butter, trying to figure out how can we make this thing go and get bigger and better as we go. So for everybody yes. that's with us now, thank you for being on board because we're only going to get bigger and better. And we're that's working it. at it. We're just chipping at it. And we're going and we're going. Uh, and I'm excited to do it with you, JJ. I'm excited you, uh, to do it with you too, Big Willie. You, you, you tickle my fancy. All right. So uh, <laughs> let's, let's read some of the comments because I always want to address okay. the people. Because they love us. Uh, this is from Tanya Lee, 1182, on YouTube. Uh, she just wanted to give a shout out and say, hey, this is one of my favorite podcasts, not the ex Charles at the house. Uh, she was referring to me making a comment last week about random people being invited to parties exactly. at, at his house. That, and that's we were talking said. about the exes and all. Right. That, that's what she was referring to. Also, from... Uh, K9 Cuts, 7474, on YouTube. My cousin JJ hasn't changed a bit. He was the exact same way back in the day, too. Uh, I guess he's referring to when I said, hey, one thing I love about you, JJ, that you're authentic and you're unapologetically yourself. Most uh, definitely. Most definitely. Hey. Do you know Cousin K9 Cuts 7474? I think I do. I, I remember that right there. I just got to pull it up and put a face to it, but it sounds familiar, so I, I'm pretty sure if she said cuz, that definitely cuz. Well, I feel like everybody in Mississippi is related. Well, that's... <laughs> Next one up, Riri, the greatest. Uh, thoroughly enjoyed the two of you. Love you both on the show. Good to see husbands supporting their wives, but also being men of standard in their own right. This is my first intro to the pod. Welcome. Can't wait to see more. Enjoy you on the Carton Show as well. Thank you. And I've enjoyed JJ since Bring It. Yeah, JJ. Uh, daddy got to do what a daddy got to do. Goddamn reality star icon there. That guy, guy, <laughs> that guy, guy. Uh, you, both show def you both show the definition of great fatherhood. Definitely excited to see another season 
of the collective as well. So thank you, Riri the Greatest. Thank Appreciate you. all the comments. Thank you. Tell a friend to tell a friend to support us, watch us, uh, like and subscribe to the Wild Willie Podcast Show. We're going to take a quick break. Come on back to the Wild Willie Show. Wild Willie. What's going on, Big Willie? What we got going this week? Uh, I don't know if you know, but we got to send a special congratulations out to Don Staley and the women of South Carolina's basketball team. They won the NCAA championship. They've this is their third, by the way. Uh, yes. Also, congratulations to uh, women's basketball as a, as a whole. This was well, something that I think kind of captured her since last year, um, and it, what, what made this championship game. Really special was, you know, South Carolina lost. South Carolina lost to Iowa in the Final Four last year. What was interesting about last year, Caitlin Clark emerged as a superstar, and she went against Angel Reese in the title game. Obviously, LSU won, but that kind of sparked this, if you will, this good versus evil, or 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 how it, it, the villain. Whether you thought Angel Reese was the villain, or you thought Caitlin Clark was the villain. Um, because they both played the villain in, in, in multiple storylines. Um, and obviously, with all that said, they was able to play head-on, head, uh, head-to-head, excuse me, and Iowa advanced and moved on. With everything that happened, uh, yes, uh, Sunday, excuse me, I've never paid this much attention to women's basketball in my me life. Me neither, ever. And, let me, and, I'm, and I want to throw this out there. I was a fan of the 1996 U.S. women's basketball team when it was Lisa Leslie, Dawn Staley, um, and a host of others. What's interesting about this game that happened Sunday, J.J., and by the way, congratulations to both teams playing on the big stage. All eyes were on this game. In fact, uh, the NCAA Women's Championship between Iowa and South Carolina uh, set a record on Sunday, drawing 18.7 million viewers. And that's even over the bars, right? Oh, he didn't crush the boys. He's yeah. not even close. Um, the game, excuse me, this is another tidbit. I said the game was the most watched women's college basketball game since 1992, JJ. Mm. Think about that. 1992. Like, I don't know what you was doing in 92, but I was. I had uh, just graduated in 91 and, and was in college in 92. Right. Matter and of I fact, was, I was stepping. We was called the freaks of the industry. I said, say it again. What are you talking about? <laughs> Matter of fact, we were stepping. I was up in the junior college, and we had this big stepathon that happened all the way through junior high. And we used to get so much attention that even the alumni was like, "Y'all can't be doing it. Y'all can't be doing that." I'm talking about like the the bros, the the cappers, and man, I'm talking about we had a big thing in Mississippi with that. And man, we, we when we graduated. And went to junior college, of course, you know, they didn't have the Capitals and the Qs and all that on there. So we formed, like, the best ones out of high schools that was actually there. And we formed this group called the Freaks of the Industry. So, J.J., you, you was on a step team? Is that what you Yeah. Said? Shoot, man, we, we step thing were big. Matter of fact, we were so big that when I graduated, like, years, maybe about a few years after that, they are – they started having what you call the Kappa lead, the Q lead, and everything, and it, and it was like the uh, like y'all was adopting everybody that was in high school. So when they went to college, they can automatically, you know, pledge. Okay, that's how big it was. JJ, this is the first time I've ever heard you talk about you being on a step team in college. Big Will, I got some tape, boy. I got down, boy. Got done. You didn't know if I was a Q or Kappa mix. Got done. All I know, I got down right, freaking and nasty. That's why we was called the freaks of the industry. Why didn't you pledge a fraternity? Because I went to junior college. My mama wanted me to be a physical therapist. Yeah. And like I say, you got to follow your own dreams because when, when, when people start telling you what they want you to do, it ain't for you, God done it. I went a year and a half, and it just went for me. But if I had a God done it, went farther and graduated at half a year that I met, I would have pledged. What, though? What would have J.J. pledged? Kappa. <laughs> Don't you think I'm a pretty boy, Big Willie? <laughs> Oh. Big Willie, oh. come on now. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> Big uh. Willie got done. I had to, you know, I had to do a little bit of this right here. Big Willie got done. It. I had to break it down, Big Willie. He just he took, he took the air out of me on that one. I just swore <laughs> you was going to say Omega Psi Phi Fraternity Incorporated, but obviously you didn't do it. So, uh, 
It's to pivot back. Uh, congratulations once again to uh, Don Staley and the women oh, yes. of South Carolina. JJ, let's get right into it. It's time for good thinking. Oh, what are you drinking? Have you ever heard of uh, Ozempic? Olympic? No, not Olympic. God damn it. I said Ozempic. <laughs> I heard of Olympic. <laughs> no, Ozempic. <laughs> no, I uh, heard that one, Big Willie. <laughs> it's a peptide uh, that you stick into your stomach. Uh, you inject yourself once a week. It's pretty much a diabetes medication. Uh, people use it to obviously lose weight, like I mentioned. And it's also really good if you're somebody who's been struggling with weight um, and really kind of just want to get out the mud. This is a good way to start it. However, the issue with Ozempic and Wegovi, Majorno, these are all kind of the same shots. Uh, like once you stop taking it, your your fat cells split. So once you stop taking it, you get fatter. So you really oh. got to – it's not just with the medication. You have to be able to kind of change your habits. So if you don't change your habits, if you don't work out and eat better, uh, and once you just go back to your old habits, you get fatter than how you started, which isn't good. However, people have gone crazy because there's a new form uh, craze called the uh, – Oat Zimpic. And which pisses me off about this because social media has it, it strikes again. Uh, it says some TikTok users claim oh, Oat Zimpic, uh, which is made of oats, water, and lime juice, can help someone lose up to 40 pounds in as little as two months. Experts, however, say to be wary of any type of trend, uh, especially on TikTok. Uh, JJ, good thinking, or what are you drinking? Should you take the shot? Or should you, should you take the drink? Ozempic versus Ozempic. What are you drinking? I okay. think the best form of losing weight is doing what you're supposed to do on your diet, work out, and get a control of what you're eating, God darn it. That's what you need to be doing. All this other stuff, trying to find a quick way, God darn it, to lose weight and stay in shape ain't going to do nothing but harm you in, your, in the long run, if you ask me. Yeah, and there's a difference between like a blended drink and a mm -hmm. prescription jug drink. Thank excuse you. me. So there, you got to be smart with that. Um, obviously, this is. I'm gonna say good. I'm gonna say good thinking. Hmm? Don't don't hate me. Don't hate me. Don't hate me. All right, here we go. I would rather take. So I'm saying this from experience. I was. I took the Ozempic shot. Okay. I did the Wegovy, and you do lose weight, but you lose muscle too. Um, and you kind of get this, it, you're, you're, you start getting this like real skinny, your face gets sunken in a little bit. So you kind of get real tight. Um, but the downfall of it is, like I said, your fat cells split. And once you go back to your, being your old self, you get fatter, right? And so mm. you're back on the starting line and it could be, it could be hard for some people to get back on the horse. It wasn't for me. Once I stopped taking the medication, I told myself, Willie, it's bigger than you. It's your habits. It's your yep. way of life. You got to change you. The, medic the medicine is going to do what the medicine is going to do, but you got to change yourself. you right. And mm -hmm. so the reason I'm supporting the oat drink, because the oat drink doesn't have any side effects, right? You're okay. just drinking oatmeal with water and lime juice. Uh, it'll probably lock you up, suppress your appetite. Uh, it's pretty much like a meal replacement. That's what it's acting like. Gotcha. And so if you use it with changing your habits and hopefully you make it a part of your regimen, it's worked for some people. Some people have claimed um, – you know, they've lost 40 pounds. All right, let's take a break. Me and JJ, Why Willie Podcast. Come on back. JJ, from time to time, you know, we uh, we like to peacock around this place and let the world know we're the big dogs on reality TV. Well, we will be humble today. Uh, we have the yes, very sir. own Maurice Scott in the house from Love and Huntsville, the true big dog. What's going on, my brother? How you guys doing, man? Hey, I love that inter uh, that introduction too. But we know that Willie is the biggest of the big dogs. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, I say that, man, because you guys just wrapped up season seven. Which congratulations on t uh, to that, man. That that yes, speaks sir. a lot of volumes uh, from a cast storyline. The fact that Own and Carlos King say keep bringing them, them you know, keep bringing them on back. The people love you. Uh, you guys individually all have a lot going on, and as couples, man, uh, I think you guys have done a great job in reality TV, showing what business looks like. Black own business looks like and mm -hmm. black love uh that it's not always it's not always you know as you say movie-esque that there's some real issues going on and i oh, think yeah. you guys do a great job of capturing all that so once again congratulations on another great season thank you yes. so much man it's been a lot of hard work everybody you know of course they have to bear it all when you come on a carlo show so <laughs> um, <laughs> said about right, right. There's been some ups and downs, man. But overall, I think that the message has been uh, 
it's been delivered and uh, it's been well accepted, you know, by the audience. So that's a good thing. What is it like to be on a reality show that's been running a long time? That's been a huge part of your life, Marie. Um, one of the first things I think that comes to mind is uh, anonymity, mm. right? After a while, you know, uh, and Willie, I know that you play pro ball, right. so but you had a helmet on, mm. you know. That is is difficult to. I knew your name, um, as a matter of fact, because you were a road grader. Uh, but I knew your name, but I didn't know your face. Sure. You see what I'm saying? And the thing about reality television is everybody knows your face, even if they don't know your name. I think I heard Steve Harvey say this. Like, when you're on television on a, for a long period of time, you actually become, you know, part of the family to a lot of fans. So it's like, hey, Maurice, I remember, whoa, whoa, whoa. right? You see what I'm saying? So it's a... Uh, you, there's a level of fami- familiarity there that you get. I want to pivot solely towards you, and, and JJ kind of asked a great question. Um, you and your wife have been very open and honest about your relationship. Obviously, she's you're 10 years older than her. Um, you come to the table with three kids. She has her one. Um, I want to talk about the co-parenting aspect. One of the storylines this mm-hmm. she, uh, season was, how are you going to handle your son, Monster, and everything he's going through? How do you get there? Um, I think it, it happened organically. So it was a little easier. Um, and we had a lot of conversations before we got married. Like we didn't just jump into marriage. There was a lot of stuff that we had to iron out because um, she was successful doing it her way. I was successful doing it my way. Um, I did. I was divorced. So um, it was a situation of like a, matur- a maturation process from that situation, you know, because uh, I was married for about six years, six, six and a half years, you know. So uh, then moving on to, you know, the new relationship, um, you know, I had monster was like three, you know, so he was a little, little guy and Jalen, you know, he was a little bit older. And then of course you have to, you have to, uh, you have to mesh well with a young man. Right. And you have to be accepted by a young man in order for him to feel like, Hey, the most important woman in my life, you know, I'm giving you my blessing, you know, to marry her. So it was a lot of uh, inner working parts to make that work. One of the things that I love about you and Kimmy's storyline, and it's funny because it kind of it coincides with me and Keisha are currently going through. So you guys have been talking a lot about your sex life and the lack thereof, if you will. Mm-hmm. You have been dragged from, I guess, coast to coast about your comments. Obviously, for those don't 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 know. Your wife, Kimmy, has been battling cancer. Uh, and from my all reports, and you can fill me in, um, she has been doing great. Uh, the treatments are over. She's standing strong, uh, and she's walking in her word. And so I give, you, I give you, as a husband, credit for just being open and honest about what you guys are going through in a couple. And then I also want to applaud her bravery for stepping up and saying, hey, this is what we're going through, and this is what I'm going through. Mm-hmm. With that said, man, the reason I tie that back to uh, me and Akeisha, because uh, it, valid, you know, my wife doesn't have cancer, by the grace of God, thank you, but she's going through menopause. Um, and one of the things going through menopause, women aren't always in the mood. Are you guys, where are you guys at with that right now? Because I, I, I'm going to let you talk, to tell the people what you said. Um, and was it misconstrued? I think that the spirit of, like, it, just in general, right, I learned a lot from that situation, not only – um, how to better handle that situation um, in the future, but about media and sound bites, right? Mm-hmm. At the end of the day, um, with a topic like cancer, it's way too sensitive for you to even sure. you, to even like broach anything that could be offensive, right? And our conversations that we may have had between us. Um, about like no different than like, let's say, for example, uh, Willie just said his wife is going through menopause or whatever, right? right? He's sensitive to that situation. But the conversation that he has to have with his wife is about, hey, what's really going on with me? I want to know what's going on with you so that we can have a true conversation about where we're at. Because the last person that you want to lie to is your spouse, right? Yeah. This person is the person that's going to have your back when you're going through it. Like th- this is the other side to, to the media. There wasn't an appointment that I missed. I was at every single thing, right? When she wasn't feeling well, I was the one taking care of her. I was, um, I was making sure that I took notes. I, I did everything that was possible in order to help her get better. Thank God 
you know, she's one of the ones that beat it Thank because, um, man, it's, it's breast cancer. I've learned so much about cancer in general, but breast cancer is like, it's an attack dog on black women, man. Mm. Um, just for her to get over to the other side of that is just amazing. And, uh, I can tell you one thing for sure. Uh, think twice, maybe <laughs> 10 times, then speak. <laughs> you have done a fascinating job. And I think you don't get yes. enough credit of protecting your damn name. Um, and I love that for you. And I love that for me and Akisha talk about that a lot. Okay. And me and JJ talk about it off camera a lot. You have done a great job of really saying, Hey man, at the end of the day, I'm a lawyer. At the end of the day, I earned my credentials and I continue, me and my wife will continue to strive to be a factor in our community on onward and forward. Um, talk about some of the issues you have dealt with, with some of the smut and slander that's been thrown at your na- on your name. Well, um, first of all, I, I appreciate the fact that you um, that I've projected that, and you guys appreciate that. Um, I think that your name is all uh, is all you really have in this world, right? Mm. And I think that that's the first impression that people get about who you are. And what they do is they measure your character over time, right? And will you remain consistent? Will you remain? the same individual. And I think that the one thing that um, reality television can can do is it can change people, right? Yeah. Uh, fame can change people. Uh, but I think that you have to remain resolute to who you are. Um, and I'm, I'm, I'm a guy that really wants to see everybody, you know, as their best. Like, that's one of my mottos is everybody wants your best, give it to them. So I think that us performing at our best, whether mm-hmm. it's in business, whether it's in our relationships, whether it's on television, how can we project the best that we possibly can be? And I think that's really important because you don't see it all the time. Mm-hmm. And I think that uh, that's one of the things that actually was really important. And I think that helped our show take off is that the fact that you got a chance to see the successful side of what African-American business and family look like. When it comes to reunions, that's when, it, that's when all the dirt come out. It's like... Whatever I couldn't say got done when I was in when I was in front of you and I got to looking at this goddamn TV show and all the stuff that on been said got done about me that I didn't know got done was said and I had to find out watching the TV now I'm finally in your face got done on the reunion where I can basically got done it uh, talk to you about what you said and get off my chest what I got done got. So basically what I want to know is after the reunion of Love and Huntsville, Love and Marriage in Huntsville, where do the group stand right now? Well, I think the, the group stands where it's always stood, right? At the end of the day, I think, huh? Meaning? What, what <laughs> <is that? laughs> the, the, the relationships that were strong and could weather the storm, okay. <laughs> those relationships are still tight-knit. Those that couldn't weather the storm, they... Uh, they floated away like them leaves, right? Yeah. So um, I have to leave something to speculation because there's going to be some there's going to be some interesting twists and turns that pop up this season. Oh, wow. um, yeah, definitely. Like this is this is uh, this is going to be the curveball season, I believe, for the fans. Right? Mm. This is the this is going to be the curveball because a- a- after a while, you you, you kind of know what to expect, right? This is going to be expect the unexpected season. I want to I want to throw out a couple names for you, and you can either elaborate or you just give me a, a one word description. Um, and obviously, these are your cast members. Our first mm-hmm. one I want to start off probably with the most hot button person on the show, uh, and that's Martel. Can mm-hmm. you describe Martel <laughs> in your words? Martel is uh, yin and yang. He's one of those people that are completely opposites, right? He's the head and the tail. And mm. as, as much as he's head is as much as he's tail. Like as much as you see wild stuff, he's also the direct opposite of that loving father, everything else. So sometimes it's almost like, man, is this, does this dude have, you know, multiple personalities? Because <laughs> <laughs> he couldn't be further from the same guy. Right. right? Marceau. Marceau is a, a clever clown. Like he's in, he's very deep as far as a thinker is concerned. Sure. Right. But he's also a ham. And for years, like the audience hadn't got his sense of humor. Like, he has a dry, dark sense of humor at times. Right. So it took a, it took people that. a long time to catch up. Yeah. To that. Another name for you. Leticia. She is sweet. 
and saucy. This is the thing about Letitia. She's a, she's a go-along, get-along uh, type of person. She likes to have fun, everything else. But when T pops off, T's popping off. And, oh. and she pops off with, with intention. Right. She's not wasting her energy. Oh, yeah. No, no, no. It, 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 it means what she, she means for it to be. What about Stormy? Stormy, you know what? I don't really know Stormy like that. Like, okay. she's um, she's difficult for me to get a read on. Like, I'm 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 generally like a person that um, I listen with my eyes, right? Sure. And uh, it's difficult to get a read on because we haven't been, you know, in the same space that often. It's a lot of things that go on you know, with reality TV, but is there certain things that are off limit on the show that you will and will not allow? Absolutely. Absolutely. There's, first of all, I, I'm not going to compromise my kids' uh, mental health for mm. anything. I right? love that. I love that. Uh, I know what I can handle. I don't know what my children can handle. Mm -hmm. Right. And we all heard the stories of people that have grew, grew up on TV or grew up with fame, and then they somehow lose it. You're like, man, there, it's a head scratcher because you're always thinking, like, they had everything. What, what happened? What went wrong? Right? And the truth is um, social media, right, this, this age that we live in, everybody yes. has a voice right now, more so than they should. Yes. Right? See, back in the day, um, there were consequences for our words, right? Yes. People would get punched in the face for their words. <laughs> yes. <laughs> right. Now you can hide behind uh, a, a, a avatar or a, a picture, a false picture or whatever, and you can say whatever, anything that you want to say, right? Yep. And people have to live with that 24-7, 365. Mm -hmm. It's incessant. So I don't want to add anything that could hurt my children's well-being Based off being on reality TV, and I know it's a lot of, you know, people see, you know, negative in a lot of situations. What are the positive uh, impact that you can give somebody as far as advice about reality TV? Um, what I can tell you, number one, is you never know how, how much impact you have uh, until you do something wrong. Mm. <laughs> And <laughs> you're right. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Listen, by the back. <laughs> we weren't even actually even on television. I was in an interview with Carlos, and uh, one of the one of the ladies that do PR for us uh, sent she sent uh, an article from Australia. Oh wow. It said American reality television star. I'm like, whoa, you're not even talking about Maurice at this point. <laughs> you're talking about an American. Right. I was like, wow. I never would have guessed that we had that level of reach, mm. you know? So um, just to see that situation um, and the blowback, that means that if you have that type of reach negatively, you also have that type of reach positively, right? So... Uh, I look at that and I say, uh, not just that, there's, there's been people that literally stopped me in the street that, uh, that was, that, that thanked me for, you know, what I've done on the show, the, the, uh, the, uh, the things that we've presented on the show, um, Kimmy, her, her story, yep. people that actually their lives were saved. I know four women, uh, personally that, went and got a mammogram after Kimmy because mm. she said to go and do it. And all four of them found early uh, uh, detection and they were able to go through, you know, some of them went through chemo. Others didn't even have to go through chemo, but their life was saved because of that. When you leave the show and when you kind of compact to put everything together, what do you want people to say about Maurice Scott? That he cared. Damn. Right. Maurice cared. I cared about the people that I'm connected to. I cared about my family. I cared about my community, right? Um, I want to see us win. And far too often, we just don't have the chance um, and we're not given the opportunity for us to excel. And I think that we're some of the most creative individuals uh, on the face of the planet. We make something out of nothing all the time. 
Right. And <laughs> anybody that you see that's successful, man, they're a superhero. For real. Right. right. I just got one question for each of y'all. Yes, All yes, right. yes. All right. never, Jay, this is the first question we've ever got, by the way. <laughs> first question. <laughs> first question. I had first question. Just got that. I had to get ready. <laughs> All right, y'all get ready because this is, this is Barbershop 101. All right. <laughs> All right. I'm going to ask you first, Jay Jay. Okay. Basketball, who is your GOAT? <laughs> Curry. I'm a Steph Curry man to the house. That boy can throw the ball behind his head, got darn it, from out of bounds and make that got darn shot and win a got darn game. Listen, so for me, I'm a diehard Knicks fan, grew up in New York. Knicks has been my everything. Uh, but I also, before I was a Knicks fan, I grew up a Laker fan. And Irvin Magic Johnson was the world to me. Uh, you're talking about a guy who played all five positions, six nine at the point guard position, um, let her known what he did on the court. He was off the court, he was an icon, right? You talk about impact. Well, you know, being 6'9", with that smile, with everything that came along with, you know, owning Hollywood at the time with the legendary Pat Riley and Kareem Abdul-Jabbar and everything, um, he's, he was just on another level for me. Because, you know, I was the chunky kid on the playground that could handle the ball, right? Mm -hmm. And so to see another tall, thick brother that had to handle, I was like, oh, maybe the shot. Well, I didn't grow to 6'9". I stopped at 6'3", and, and, and did a good Lord was like, grab your helmet, I got another place for you. So um, <laughs> that, that's how that ended. But Magic's probably my GOAT. So. Exactly. And I'm going to just hey, be hey, honest with you. Well, uh, that's my, my, my presence go. In the order, mm -hmm. is Michael Jordan all day long. Then yeah, after uh, Michael Jordan, I got to go Kobe. Yeah, after yeah, Michael Jordan, yeah. I got to go Kobe. That's the <laughs> next best thing to Michael Jordan. And in that order, I hate to say it, but it's Jordan, then Kobe. See, you know what? That, the reason why I asked that is because I had to see where we're going to go with our favorite mm. or where we're going to go with the GOAT. Okay? okay. <laughs> now, there's a goat. Well, the goat is LeBron. Okay, ah! LeBron's the goat. Yeah, guys, by all measures, when you look at the, it, it speaks for itself. Now, Willie had to fight for Magic. <laughs> 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 JJ, you ain't had to fight for Curry. <laughs> <Nah>. <laughs> you ain't had to fight for Curry. But then for you, I, I understand Jordan. You know, because a lot of people throw Jordan in there. I understand Magic. Magic's a winner all the time. Um, I just that—that's my ultimate question to see where people are at. You know, yeah. who's your goat? Um, I can't thank you enough for being on the show, man. It was yes, a pleasure. Sir. It was a delight. Once again, check out Love and Marriage Huntsville. Hopefully, there's a season eight. The yes, renew. Sir. If you haven't checked out season seven, or if you need to catch up, period, you don't see Maurice Scott and his beautiful wife Kimmy with a host of other people. Um, you guys are a treat, man. I, and I know I started the show by saying you guys are the big dogs. You guys are the big, big dogs for real. You guys have continued to carry on, continue to carry Kingdom Ring and Carlos, uh, Carlos King's Productions and everything that they offer. And you guys have spearheaded this thing. And, and, and from a serious note, man, for somebody who has been on TV due to football um, and transitioned to reality TV, it's good to see somebody kind of carry the torch and give me and J.J. Because one thing I think me and J.J. try to – pride ourselves on is being everyday people and respectful of people around us. And I think you do a great job of kind of being an, an, the adult in the room when you exactly, can. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> when you can, when you allow yourself to. Uh, I think you do a great job at that. So thank you for being on the show, my brother. Thank you guys for having me, man. You guys were fun from beginning <laughs> to end. <laughs> yes, sir. We got to do it again. Come on back to the Wild Willie Podcast. I'm Willie Clone, and he is... JJ, baby, let's do this, Big Willie. Let's do this. It's time for Why Willie. JJ, something came across the, the headlines that caught my eye, and I'm simply saying to myself, why? Here we go. Sexy Red says she wasn't allowed to talk with the kids during a recent high school visit because she smelled like weed. Nobody called the police. So look, so this school put me... I came up here, got you... Try to talk to the kids, get in the water that they're going to put me off me. Tell me that's my week. Says on Wednesday, April 3rd, Sexy Red shared multiple videos on her Instagram story that showed her pulling up to a local high school in St. Louis, her hometown, by the way. A uh, video showed masses of kids surrounded Sexy, Red, Sexy Red's vehicle as she popped out of the sunroof and began twerking for her young fans. The party apparently stopped there as Sexy Red soon... Uh, after that, was asked to leave the premises. 
JJ, I am somebody who has talked to kids, <laughs> will continue to talk to kids, and I know there's an order and a represent- representation in which I have to show up for the kids and in, in front of the kids to show up somewhere smelling like an ounce, to be dressed other than a professional woman. And I get it. You're an artist. You're allowed to kind of have flair and fashion and whatever. But, J.J., you're talking to the kids. You're there to make a difference. What am, where, what, I'm going to let you talk. Where, Big, what am I not seeing? Big Willie, first of all, if I know who Sex Red is. Why? And I'm a principal. Why? Who would even invite Sex Red to talk at a school? Why? I'm just trying to figure it out. What kind of inspiration, a motivation, a wisdom, a knowledge can this woman come to the goddamn school and say, I just want to let all of y'all know my my, my, my booty hole brown, my P.O. Why? goddamn pink. I mean, I'm trying to figure out what 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 is the inspiration? What is you going to say? You need to bounce, shake it, I take it, I don't that. I mean, I'm trying to figure out who would even got done to invite or got done to be able to talk, got done to the school. I'm trying to figure out what. I, sh- I have a personal struggle with topics like this because I did grow up listening to the little Kims of the world, the Trina, right? It was not like to, this though, Big Will. I mean, I grew I was an Uncle Luke fan. Uncle Luke was as raunchy as it got. Um, I loved gangster music, right? So I try to like whew, take a deep breath. But my booty hole brown <laughs> and pee hole paint. My kitty cat paint. <laughs> it just hits different when you have a baby girl, right? Yeah. And as far as my son. Bringing a woman home like that, I was like, I, I, I think we, I think you have the wrong house, son. <laughs> now, you know that's going to cause a, a conflict between you and the son, because the son really like this girl. She popular. Daddy, what are you thinking, Dad? What are you drinking, Dad? If you're going to bring somebody home, let them be of high character and quality. Don't just exactly. bring anything home. I don't exactly. care how much. I don't care what she do to you in the bedroom. I don't care how much she talks to you nicely. I, don't, I honestly don't care. When she steps foot in my door or when he steps through, the, uh, through my door, he better be a representation of not only me and your mama, but what we want you to represent as a whole. Exactly, because uh, what, they, what, what they bring represents y'all. Correct. Exactly. And so, yeah, Sexy Red wouldn't be in my house. Like, so, I'm, to like, be honest uh, with you, Big Willie, what happened to interviews and respect? I thought when you address people and you're trying to be at your best, first thing you're going to do, you're going to come in and dress right for the occasion. That's number one. Number two, I ain't never seen nobody go to an interview up in the office or speak to nobody and they smelling like got darn skunk. Well, these young kids, they think that's cool. Like, they think it's appropriate to wake and bake. First of all, the fact that you don't dress appropriately to a job interview is just like I would I like if you don't if you if I'm interviewing you for a job and you're not dressed like a professional, it's already five strikes off for me, Thank right? You. That's that just what it is. On top of that, if you come and smelling like weed, you might yeah. as well turn around. Yeah. yeah, I don't I don't know. Sexy red isn't for me, man. With that said, if it's popping and we're having fun in the club, will I do a That's little get, get a little shimmy? Yeah, I That's got some song in a moment, but. Would I want my kid to like have her plastered on the wall and be like, oh, I want to be like Sexy Red when I grow up? <laughs> That's going to be a big problem for me. That's going to be a big problem for Willie Cologne. Yes. So I'm just going to throw it out there. All right, we're going to take a quick break. Come on back. Why Willie Pray podcast. for our generation, Willie. Oh, Lord. All right, once again, thank you to Maurice Scott for Love and Marriage Huntsville. Uh, season 8 may be coming. Season 7 was spicy. If you haven't season, seen it, go check it out. The reunion show was spicy. Uh, they they yes. really got after each other. So it was yes. a lot. JJ, I had fun. Mm. Did you have fun? I had a great time. Big Willie loved it. Yes. And I want to continue to have fun uh, by myself uh, in my beautiful castle. Uh, Big Willie, I'm jealous, Big Willie. I'm jealous, Big Willie. uh, Well, you you have a choice. Send so Gucci on a a vacation, her and the dog, and you enjoy your castle by yourself. I got ha- I got to have him up here too, Big Willie. I got I got the dog. I got Gucci. Everybody, Big Willie. You sitting there by yourself, got done. It's just me and got done to the dog. Every damn time, th- th- I can't got done to even sit down and look at a movie, Big Willie, because I got to get up every damn thirty minutes, and take him to the bathroom because he want a treat. Yep, sucks to be you. Uh, till next time, <laughs> I'm Willie Claude, and he is JJ, baby. Peace. See you next week. <laughs>